uh, I've always been a big <laughs> part of the church. <coughs> and I was a mission, I'm a, a mission president, and it's just I work in the church diligently. That's my life. And after my son was ministering down there, it made me so happy, it pleased me. He began to tell me uh, uh, about other young men there, and he, you go to see him, he never was sad, and I saw something in him that pleases me, pleased me. And therefore, I, my pastor ordained me as ordained missionary. I had to have those papers in order to do minister visits. So you have to be ordained missionary. So and after I did that, I just began, sometimes she would go see my son, and I would minister to other inmates because he would tell me, I want you to come minister to so-and-so because he's so down in the dumps. He need uplifting. And she would visit him, and I would visit other ministers because he said, I don't, I'm not selfish because there's others that need this hope that I have. And I began to just, and it didn't make no difference of the color of the people that I visit. I visit some of all kinds. Hispanics, black, Mexican, uh, uh, just anybody. And I would go minister to them. And so that's what really engrossed me to keep this ministry alive because there's a great need down there amongst those young men. And they got some down there 18 and 19 years old. They got young men, middle-aged men, and old men down there on death row. And, and, and some of them lose their mind. It was a guy, he couldn't stand the pressure. He dug his eyes out and ate them. There was one guy, he was gonna be executed like tomorrow, when they went in on tomorrow to get him, he had hung himself. They said they wasn't going to kill him. He was going to kill himself. So it is so ungodly. Those, those young guys are treated so bad. Until they, they just feel like they, they are not nobody. I go and try to make a difference. To let them know that they are somebody. They are just as much as the people on the outside world. Don't never beat up on yourself because we all have sinned and come short of God's glory. So therefore, I can't reach them all, but if you reach one, and that one reach somebody else, it's just like the word of God when you, when you plant it, and then you plant it in somebody else, and then it's just a, you know, they can make the difference spreading the word to each other. So it, it makes a great difference. And I goes down there. There are times that I have got up in the morning I didn't feel like going, but I told the Lord, I said, it's your will I'm doing. I know you're going to give me the strength because I have to go about 80 miles one way, but still I go. <laughs> People ask me, you go down there by yourself? I said, no, Lord. I said, me and Jesus, we talk all the way down there, and when I come back, I sing and pray all the way and cry coming back. Just to know that I have brightened up somebody's day. That's what make the difference. That's what make me happy. To know that I have touched somebody's heart. To let them know Jesus loved them. That, when Jesus went to the cross, he could have come down, but it was love kept him there for the whole world, for everybody. See, he's not a partiality God. He did it for everybody. So whosoever will, he said, let them come. But you have to introduce those guys to Jesus or to a better way of thinking, to better their lives because they are really hopeless. And we should make a difference in one life. We should.